current awareness of neuroendocrine cancer in the healthcare community is limited. Many people have not heard of neuroendocrine tumors or carcinoid tumors. We still struggle with the awareness of neuroendocrine cancers and carcinoid syndrome. The lack of general medical knowledge about this rare disease could have cost me my life. I think this is due to the fact that it is a rare cancer, rare by incidence, meaning the number of patients diagnosed per year. But what's interesting is that the incidence and prevalence are both increasing. And the prevalence, meaning the number of patients alive, is actually quite high. It's higher than that of stomach and pancreas cancer combined. In the last 30 years, incidence of neuroendocrine cancers increased 500%. Neuroendocrine tumors are primarily slow-growing malignancies. And I think it is important in the modern era for people to recognize that this is best considered as a chronic manageable disease. For which they can live for many years. But the flip side of that is that they also have the chronicity of scans and treatments and labs and medical care. Even people with stable non-functional tumors who are doing well still may be living with physical and psychological struggles every day. They need help finding the right medical team. They need help treating this weird syndrome which is hurting their quality of life. And they need help remembering how to enjoy life. I think the unique thing about taking care of patients with neuroendocrine tumors is there's a high degree of variability about how patients present. Before 2015, I thought of myself as being a healthy, physically active person. I had no idea that I had NET. I had no symptoms. Patients with neuroendocrine tumors have ups and downs in their disease. They may feel really, really good. Or they may present to us extremely unwell, often with symptoms of carcinoid syndrome. Whenever symptoms occur, some of those symptoms include diarrhea, flushing of the skin, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, and dizziness. I was having rectal bleeding so bad that they were giving me blood transfusions, yet none of the doctors felt that this was anything that was really urgent. Some patients can be very, very sick for a number of years and get misdiagnosed and before this is finally found. And that is one of the most important things that people should know about neuroendocrine cancer. Not only is it unlike other more common cancers, but it is difficult to detect and diagnose. And that it's important to be with a physician who understands and knows about the nuances of neuroendocrine. What makes this cancer unique is the fact that, for the, that the best treatment of this cancer actually takes a village. No matter how good you are as a physician, you cannot do it by yourself. I think it is best for patients with neuroendocrine tumors to seek out areas of excellence where there is a lot of experience and more importantly, diversity of experience. Seek out the guidance of a specialist. These are the physicians with the greatest expertise and experience, both treating and following net patients. Get your second opinion first. Locate a center, a multidisciplinary center that specializes in the care and treatment of patients with this problem and take the benefit of their experience uh, their breadth of knowledge and multidisciplinary approach where collective brains are always better than one. As new treatments become available, such as teletrostat or somatostatin analog, particularly around PRT or peptide receptor radionuclide therapy, I think that this has been one of our biggest advances in the last decade for patients with NETS. We need to be educating our patients about these treatment options and offering them to patients if applicable. So my message to you on this Neuroendocrine Tumor Awareness Day is that we do need to expand our awareness amongst our colleagues who are physicians but don't see these diseases very commonly. 
We need to expand the awareness for the general population. Talk to your family and friends about this very unique disease so that we can increase awareness and understanding of the diagnosis. As a patient, as a family member, or as a physician treating a patient with this condition, it is okay to ask for help. We need to advocate for ourselves. We need to find good doctors. We need to find the right treatment. And I'd also counsel you to join a support group. Don't stop. Don't accept that first opinion that there's nothing that we can offer you. Get an expert opinion from a multi-specialty center. So if I had one word to describe my perspective on patients with neuroendocrine tumors after seeing this disease for the last 20 some odd years, I'd have to say it's optimistic. Progress. I would say hopeful. Any means you have to make a connection to spread awareness about neuroendocrine cancer, please do it now. There is a potential for one more life to be changed for the better. So if there was one thing I would really want you to take away, it is to know that you are not alone. Whoever you are today, whether you're a patient, a caregiver, a healthcare professional, you're not alone. There are many zebras out there. And together, in a herd, right, as a dazzle, we're stronger. And we can beat this together.